What's up, everyone? Welcome to another episode here on the Lure Lab on the Serious Angler Network. And as always, I am your host, the captain, DeAndrew Fult. And we have a couple things of business here I want to take care of before we get into the episode. And it is episode 51, which wrongfully of me, I forgot to acknowledge something in the past epi- episode when we hit episode 50 with uh, Elite Series Pro Alex Redwine, and we're talking about his three favorite baits from the late summer in the fall transition. And the one thing I want to recognize real quick is that we are officially at one year on the Lure Lab, which is awesome. Episode 52, you know, there's 52 weeks in the year. We missed a couple episodes throughout the year due to some holidays and internet issues. So I believe we are now officially at one year as you guys are tuning in and everyone's tuning in and listening to these episodes and me talk about fishing and having on awesome guests uh, break down all these techniques. And as always, we are so thankful for everyone who tunes in here to Serious Angler Network into the Business from the Bass Boat episodes. Um, So thank you everyone for tuning in and making this such an awesome platform for us to share all this awesome information all about bass fishing with everyone who tunes in all of you rock but to the order of business episode 51 today we are talking probably my absolute favorite technique outside of like an alabama rig in the fall or a blade bait this falls right in my top three and that is speed cranking and we're going from shallow to about as deep as you can go. And I'm going to hold up some baits here real fast. I don't know if you'll be able to see all these, but I, we have a whole smorgasbord of crankbaits from these guys to these guys. And we're going to dive all the way into, into some like staples that everyone here should really know like what some of these baits are. And we're going to dive into where to throw them, when to throw what colors, and different retrieves and rod and reel setups that I use on my boat with me and my clients whenever they come out speed cranking with me. And it's one of the, there's usually like a two to three week window for me that this really goes down for smallmouth. And I'm going to give you like just about everything that I know and what I do to get more fish in the boat for me and my clients. And the bite is just now starting to ramp up. I was out on the water today with a couple buddies, and man, they started to eat it. It's not quite there yet. We, I think I got like five or six cranking today, and I lost. I had a musky break off an OSP, which was devastating, but that's neither here or there. We're getting right into the nitty gritty, and the best baits that I like to use when speed cranking, when the water starts dropping below. 65 degrees and where to target these fish right and we've had some awesome fall episodes on the serious angler network so if you haven't tuned in there make sure you look for it go find some of the fall episodes we have a ton of amazing guests on and we talk all about fall fishing right so we're gonna start shallow first like sub six foot so six foot or less Um, And basically the only time I'm ever doing this on our lakes here in New York is the water is really clear. And I try not to go up that shallow if I'm targeting smallmouth, but largemouth love to live up there. And I found a hybrid coffee bill crankbait that fishes really well slow, but you can also, in my opinion, speed crank it really, really well. And right after I talk about this crankbait, I'm going to go into the two setups that I use because that will allow me to talk more about the deeper diving side of speed cranking. And there's actually a couple crankbaits that I did not have because they're in my boat and they're covered that I'm going to include in here on crankbaits that work really, really well to get a ton of bites. So down in the description below, if you're on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, whatever your favorite MP3 platform is, or on YouTube, down below, all these baits will be linked if they are on Omnia, so you can go and buy them up and fish them, including the reel and the line that I use. But first, up shallow, rip wrap, rocky areas. This bait actually deflects really well out of trees as well if you retrieve it properly. Um, <clears throat> and you can fish it really fast or really slow. 
and we're getting expensive here. This is the OSP Blitz MR. Now, I did, I haven't thrown this bait a ton because there's not a lot of areas for me to throw it when I'm smallmouth fishing because I'm I'm a grinder, which we're going to get into. And what I mean by a grinder is not putting my head down and just reeling and burning a ton of water. I'm a grinder. I want my baits ripping through the ground. But this is an excellent option for largemouth and smallmouth. So like your bodies of water that have mixed populations of bass in it, or if it's just strictly largemouth, getting up shallow if they're feeding on shad. The Blitz MR is a really, really good one. You can fish it fast. You can fish it slow. It deflects well. It casts really, really well. And OSP is really unique on the way they designed and engineered these baits. And that whenever you buy one and you roll it over on the bottom, you'll see here, this is a tungsten centering ball. So what that allows is to take this bait that's got a honeycomb technology to the building of the plastic to make it thinner and lighter and more durable than your standard crankbait plastic on the market. Um, this thing casts an absolute mile for being three eighths of an ounce, I do believe is how much it weighs. So you can cover a ton of water. You can bang it off a ton of stuff with the coffin bill. It's a great deflecting bill. It's not your traditional square bill. So this thing hunts really well. It gets a ton of bites. Um, this color specifically is Jinrin. They make a lot of really cool colors. This is actually kind of a hard bait to get your hands on. So this is the only one that I have in this. And it has been my favorite one to fish when I'm on a finger lake or just an inland body of water around New York where we reside. And I'm sure this one will get bit wherever they're eating on smaller forage. So let's fast forward to our setups real fast. And we're going to dive right into that. There's the, I use the same rod for both my setups and then reels. In line so my cranking rod that i use i'll see if i can get it up here without breaking stuff is you know you see the black and blue we talk about them all the time alpha angler rebound it's a seven foot medium heavy moderate fast rod and what that means is the moderate fast is it has a deep bend in the rod when you hook a fish and that's basically paramount when you're fishing a treble hook bait, because if you use too stiff of a rod, you're going to pull the hooks out of that fish's mouth. So you want a cranking rod or a composite rod or a glass rod when you're fishing this technique. I like the S glass, which is a structural grade glass that comes in all the alpha angler rods and their cranking styles and also the Y glide because it's also extremely sensitive. So you can basically know if you're grinding it through mush, you're grinding it through mud, you're grinding it through rock or shell. You can tell them that when a fish smokes it, it just doesn't, the rod just doesn't load up. You can actually feel that fish thump your bait as you're deflecting it and popping it off of rocks. The reels I use are two different speeds. And this is the reason why I use two different speeds is because I want to be able to go fast, and faster without blowing the crankbait out and i want the fish to tell me what they want and when i know there's a crankbait bite going down i want both of them on my deck because every day the fish's attitude is a little bit different and a lot of times i'll have like a medium-sized crankbait which we're going to talk about and a larger size crankbait and i'll kind of rotate them back and forth and in a perfect world i'd have like eight crankbait setups and have them all on the deck, but there's also a lot of other techniques that really flourish during this time in this bite period. But speed cranking is what we're talking about today. So a 6.3 and a 7.2 or a 7.3 to 1 gear ratio. And the reason is, I say with the 6.3, you can go fast with it and burn that crankbait and get it down. But sometimes they just want it a little bit faster that's when you go to the seven three to one and you can actually pause it a little bit longer with the faster reel and get some really really awesome reactionary fish feeding bites so like you hit that rock that bait stops you're like counting a one two three before you engage that reel again your rod's getting ripped out of your hand so you're creating a reactionary fish feeding bite that they are just absolutely unloading it because up here in the north these fish need to eat in order to be ready for the winter 
when they basically go into frozen tundra mode and they don't eat nearly as much in their body and their metabolism really slows down. Water temp is key. 65 and below, when you get in the mid 50s, that's when it goes off. And then upper 40s to mid 40s, it will start to wean out. But you can still catch some of the biggest fish of the year doing that. Now, with the speed cranking, we are going to start with the diving bills, ones that go like eight foot, and we're going to go all the way up to about 15 foot. And there's quite a few different baits here that I like to use for water temp purposes and also for the bite period. And I'm going to start off with my absolute favorite brand. And I've already mentioned it's OSP. And I'm probably going to take a lot of flack for talking about OSP crankbaits. But there's one thing that sets them apart is that they cast better. They run better straight out of the package. You don't have to tune them nearly as much. And we'll talk about tuning crankbaits here once we get into some of the other ones. And they just straight out catch fish. So the first one is the OSP DR. And another cheaper model that you can buy is uh, Strike King Series 3. This is a 3XC, which we're going to talk about here in a minute. But you can buy a Series 3, and it'll actually run the same way. And this little dude is actually a really bad-to-the-bone speed crank. You can catch a lot of big fish throw in the original Series 3 crankbait. But the OSP DR it is this dude right here. And I'm going to hold up a 3XC in comparison to it so you see the size. They are literally the same size. One is $22. The other one's like 8 So you can pick your poison. I personally, I stick by using high-end gear with my guide clients, and I'm a high-end gear junkie. I love it whenever I can afford it. I buy it because it just plain out works. So a color like this, this is, I believe is chartreuse Wagasaki, and I might be wrong on that color, but it's this yellowy, pale, matte color with a purple sheen to it. And when I'll throw this dude is when I'm in like six to 10 foot of water with a lot of rock and not a ton of vegetation. I want this thing either just above the rock or really bouncing it through the rock. And what really makes OSP unique when it even goes into the deeper dive, diving crankbaits is they still have, this is a spoonbill style deeper diving crankbait, but it's coffined off. It has this flat edge to it. And I think that's one of the keys to allowing it to get bit better than just your standard spoonbill crankbait is because it deflects a lot differently and it gets down deeper, faster with almost zero resistance. And that's why I throw it on a seven foot rod because I can still cast it super far on 12 pound test because this baby will just fly. Now, these are size six hooks on these. I change out all of my crankbait hooks and the crankbait hooks I use, actually, I have some right here, are Owner ST36. Yeah, Owner ST36. These are the BCs. Um, I don't remember what BC stands for, but size 5, size 6, and size 4 are the ones that I'll switch out. With the OSP DR, it is size 6 only. And this thing, I am just bombing it away if I have a shallow flat. I'm paralleling that flat and I'm casting at a 45 or straight across it and bringing that bait back to me. And I'm trying to get them to react to it. So I'm, I'm burning it. If I feel structure, I'll stop it for a second, maybe even pop the rod tip and just start burning it again. And as I'm burning it though, it's not just a straight burn. I'm kind of mixing in real retrieves, making that bait dart all over the place. And that's one of the beauties about speed cranking is you're creating a reactionary feeding bite. When these fish get it, they don't have it on the outside of their face. It is always T-boned or down their throat. And it's just one of the ways that I just absolutely lose my mind when I'm smallmouth fishing, but largemouth will get on it too, usually a little bit earlier in the year. The next crankbait series up, which is probably the most fun way to fish and we're going to, going to go like nine to 12 foot maybe 13 if you go down to like eight pound test and in this range there's a few different crankbaits that you can throw like a striking series five 
or 5XD and when to choose what colors, right? So let's start there. When to choose what color crankbait based on conditions in this realm. This is the realm that I probably fish 99% of the time when I am speed cranking. Like you can see this bill is just basically worn out i have another example one here this one is absolutely just worn away like here's a brand new one of an osp to one that has been absolutely just grinded away i don't even know if that one will get down to about 12 to 15 foot anymore because it's been just absolutely obliterated actually this is the one i was throwing today that got smoked a few times for me but when to choose what crankbait color? Light, wind, bright sunny skies, translucent, like a blue gizzard in a 5XD or a Series 5. And you can fish a 5XD in 8 to 12 foot of water on 12 pound test because it's only going to get down about 13, 14 max on a super far cast. But you're going to want to grind this baby through that rock because you want to make contact with structure and make them come get it. You bump that off a rock, small mouth, large mouth in the fall. They want to feed. You bump this baby off a rock. Sorry, I hit my mic. You bump this baby off a rock, and that fish is going to come up and smoke it because it's sitting there slowly rising, and they're going to come in and T-bone that bait and just absolutely rip the rod. So sunny, light wind, translucent baits like a blue gizzard, green gizzard in the Series 5 or 5XD. If it's overcast, rainy, you want more like your opaque white colors. That's when I would throw like uh, your traditional sexy shad. You can get bit on this in the sun, but I find whites like this with the chartreuse stripe work really, really well when you have overcast, mixed conditions, wind, slack calm. Just something that you need to really pop in that water and make those fish come a long way to get it. So there's one. Another one that I don't have that are in my boat is like a Spro Rock Crawler. A OG Wiggle Wart works really well in this water depth for deflecting it. The, the Rock crawl, Crawler fish is a little bit better on the speed crank than an OG Wiggle Wart. And OG Wiggle Wart is more of a thumping wide action. That Rock Crawler, I feel like, has a little bit tighter action so you can get away with really cranking it relatively fast and if i'm throwing a rock crawler i'm only throwing it in a crawfish pattern like a brown or a pb and j now the next one that you could throw and this one is important for me to talk about water temp before i get into my all-time favorite which i've already showcased here a little bit it's really important with water temp to sometimes go away from plastic and to pick up a balsa bait and this one you can throw all year round and a ton of people have success with it all year round and i will only throw this bait on the six three to one gear ratio reel that's a rapala dt10 it's still oh i feel like i skipped something really big and i'm gonna go back to it here it just popped in my brain on my notes i was like oh i missed something really important so hold with me here as i talk about the balsa bait but the DT-10 is really important because you can fish it fast or you can fish it slow and it'll still get down. Important side note, do not slap this bait on the water. It will probably break because it is balsa. But this is one of the best fish catchers literally made all time. And balsa is awesome in colder water, like below 52 degrees. When this baby hits something, as I throw it here, when this baby hits something, it's going to deflect and slowly float up. And that dead slow action of it floating up is when those fish eat it, they they come unglued. There's, but crankbait fishing, you do not want to just straight retrieve it. You want to change your rod angle a little bit, change your pulses in your reel as you're reeling, speed up, slow down, half turns, quick half turns. That's going to cause that bait to do different things. But with a DT-10, I feel when you're slow winding it, if you just kind of give it one, two twitches, that thing will change. And then, Or if you deflect off something, you pause, it just slowly rises and the fish can't stand it. <laughs> Colors there, um, there's basically only two that I'm going to throw. It's going to be like a white like this. I don't remember the name of this color. You can comment down below if you remember it. And then this one, when this is a DT-8, 
right? Yeah, this is actually a six. But I will throw this if I'm on a body of water with perch and it's cloudy and overcast. Solid body, has some silver flakes to it, so it's really going to pop out in some cloudy water. Not cloudy water. Stained. Cloudy water, meaning like in the fall, sometimes we'll have turnovers and the lakes will turn like this tannic, must not mustard, tannic brown color. That's when I will go to this guy because it's really going to stand out and have a lot of contrast in that water. Now to my, okay, not to my all-time favorite bait. We need to have a second here and talk about the specific crankbait that you need for speed cranking. I should have prefaced this at the very, very start of the show, and I kind of did it a little bit with the OSP MR. But... Speed cranking is so important to have the right style crankbait. And if I hold these up here, let's take the ones we've already talked about. Now I'm going to see if we can see here. So this is the MR. Look at the body shape, right? It's slim, but it's a little round, has a flat top to it. Very aerodynamically sound. My favorite bait, which we're going to talk about here in a second, the OSP EXDR, it's the same body shape as that MR. And this allows it, it's very aerodynamically sound. So it's straight. It's basically a flat, it's almost a flat sided, but slightly round. And the bill isn't any much more wide than the bait itself. And I feel like that's important for the aerodynamics of that bait. So as it's as you're ripping it through the water. It is staying true and sound. You need a very well-balanced crankbait in order to speed crank. Otherwise, it's going to blow out and roll. And that's where tuning these guys really, really comes in handy. Because sometimes, like with these 5XDs, you're going to have to tune them a little bit. Because when you're speed cranking them, they're going to bounce or they're going to pull right or pull left or kind of roll based on the way this little guy here in the bill is tuned. But the 5XC is the same body shape, right? Like as the EXDR, in a way. It's very slender. The bill's a little bit wider than the body. But it also has, I don't, it's really hard to tell it in here. But the top of this bait is actually flattened off where they combine the two plastic sides together. It's flat on the top and it's flat on the bottom. And that allows that bait to run true at higher speeds than some of the more rounded crankbaits. I found when they're round, I wonder if I have a round one here. I do not. So with a rounded crankbait, what causes that is it gets more like list and roll. So when you get a big round bulbous looking crankbait, when you try to speed crank it, the chances of it going like this and running one way is way more likely and so that's a little bit more narrower and has the same width as the bill now to the exdr osp uh i think i have every single color of this crankbait made and there's only a certain couple that really really stand out and catch fish for me and i'm going to walk through my process and those who commented on the post on instagram you guys made me want to talk about this even more. But there's certain times, color conditions, current conditions that you're going to get bit on this bait. And there's just certain colors that are better than others, in my opinion, up here in the north. And that you can use different colors in your body of water that pertain to your particular fish. But my two starting points with... The OSP EXDR. One is going to be your variable conditions, mix of sun, cloud, leaning more cloudy with even a little bit of wind or stained water. And that's this vanilla chartreuse color. It's very loud, but it's also matted down a little bit. So it stands out really, really well in the water. This one's caught a bunch of fish already. And you can see the hook rash on it. That's from burning it through the rocks. Little bit of lip wear, but I was throwing this one over 15 foot of water and get them to come up on forward facing and bite it. But vanilla chartreuse, when it is cloudy 
And this thing absolutely screams. I burn it sometimes in six foot of water. And I'm going to show you this one here in a second, how beat up actually just look at that bill compared to a new one that hasn't been burned through the rocks compared to one that's an absolutely torched. This color is in the EXDR is the real IU version two. And look at this bad boy. You know, tell that the fish have knocked the fire out of this thing. This is the color I will throw when you have a light wind and it is bright, sunny out. It's flashy. It's got a silver undertow. Just make emits a ton of light under the water and they're going to come a long ways to get this guy. I've actually sight fished some fish because some of our water here is really clear and I've seen them come like 20, 25 feet away to come get this dude. When it's sunny, super sunny, light wind, you can see a far distance. This is going to be the one that I am burning the ever-living life out of with a 7-2 to 1 reel. Because I just want to make as much noise grinding through that rock, throwing light, and just really getting the attention of fish to come over and grab it and bite it. Now, if it's sunny and slick calm or... We'll say variable condition slick calm. That's why I'm going to go to like a ghost minnow type color, something that's super translucent, has like an olive tannish back, mimics a lot of bait fish really well, especially in my opinion, a goby. A lot of gobies tend to be this color. And I'll throw like a ghost minnow when it, the conditions say that. Or if they're just a little bit more leery of the bright, flashy one, like the real IU version too. I'll tone back and go something a little bit more translucent. And this one has caught some fish. They all catch fish, but this has been a favorite when I'm going. If I know they're on this OSP EXDR bite, though, it's almost always these two. Something bright, loud, something flashy, and I'm throwing them to see which one I can get bit. And then I'll go into, like, the seven other colors that I like. Next step up, we're going to go like 10 to 15 foot of water. So you can still throw your EXCR in this range and not bump it in the grass if they want smaller forage. Or you can go bigger, and this is where we're going to go 5XD OSP Max DR. This is gin ring color. Or Lucky Craft 2.5 extra deep. And this guy will get down to like 18 foot. And this one kind of goes against what I was saying about the spoonbill being the same width as your bait. But this one does something a little bit different. This one deflects incredibly well. Like, look at the, the bill difference between a 5XD and the Lucky Craft. Like, this thing, if I overlap it here, you can see how much wider. Uh, maybe not. But this guy, it's got like another quarter inch total in width of that spoon bill here on the crankbait. And this thing gets down super fast. It pulls back really hard. You can't fish this one nearly as fast as like a 5XD because of the width of the bill. But I'll throw this guy when the water temp is in that mid-60s in that 15-foot range. And I know they're feeding on shad. And the favorite, my favorite one I had was actually the blue chartreuse. And that's a color I forgot to mention. You can throw everything out the window and just throw blue chartreuse if you have it and always have it ready to go because they always eat that color for whatever reason. It could be cloudy, sunny, wind, no wind. Almost always have a blue chartreuse on. And this is the one that I have it in if it's in my other crankbait box. And these guys, a little bit slower, 6.3 to 1 reel. And all the rest of the crankbaits you can throw on a 6.3 to 7.3 to 1. You're looking for rock. You're looking for dying vegetation, getting on that vegetation edge. Or some of them just keeping it above that vegetation and just ticking it out. And then I want to wrap it up here with something super important that we want to talk about. Two things first. One, when it comes to tuning a crankbait, I do not. When you go to tune your crankbait, the eye here on the bill, it's kind of hard to see it because there's a split ring there. But the eye on the bill, when you tune a crankbait, you do not want to move this thing a ton of 
weighs left or right. It's literally micro fra- fractions, like the tiniest little bit. And if it starts running too far left when you tune it, just move your eye the other way. Just tiniest bit and get it, keep kind of working it back. Don't make a super far cast for like 15, 20 feet from the boat. And that baby will, as you're tuning it, the baby will tell you, this lure will tell you how you're tuning it to get it to run straight. Second, always, always, always. And this is going to be my do it molds juice of the week. I already talked about changing the hooks. But here's why the style of hook that I use. So the do it molds juice of, juice of the episode, juice of the week. And you can run right over to do it molds. They not only sell like molds and all these kits to make your own plastics and pour your own lead and create all of your own tackle and lures and all your dreams galore. But they also sell a ton of hooks and you can buy hooks in bulk. And <clears throat> In the fall, when I am speed cranking, I never throw an EWG. It is always a round bend. And I love ST36s. Another good one is a Gamakatsu, just old bronze round bend. They're super sharp. You have to change them a little bit more often than the owner ST36s. And there's pluses and downsides to both of them. The ST36, I find I flex out quite a bit. And the round bends, I don't flex out as much, but the round bends dull out faster, in my opinion, than an ST36. And when you're burning your bait through rocks, I always have like three or four extra packages of these in the boat so I can change them out. So if you head over to the Do It Molds website, you can actually buy treble hooks in bulk. And if you want to change out your hooks and get ready for speed cranking, throw some round bends on there because if they're absolutely just t-boning that baby i find that a round bend works better than a wide gap because a wide gap for me i want when these fish are reacting to it like post spawn late summer they're slapping at the bait and pushing it so i hope you enjoyed this episode here on the lure lab i hope you learned something about speed cranking we do have some guide trips and i'm hoping that we are able to get out around that time in the middle of november for when The speed cranking bite is my absolute favorite time to absolutely lead on these fish up here in the north. We have a couple days left. If you are looking to get out and catch some big smallmouth, we greatly appreciate everyone who tunes in every week. We hope you enjoyed the speed cranking episode. We do have some awesome guests lined up for some more fall episodes here in the next coming weeks. So make sure you stay tuned to those. If you're on YouTube, hit that subscribe button if you're new here. We greatly appreciate everyone who subscribes and gives us a follow. Throw a comment down below if you've speed crank or what your favorite speed crank is. And if you're on MP3, like Apple Podcasts or Spotify, please leave a review that helps this podcast be shown to more bass lovers like you and I alike. And until next Saturday, we will see you then. (laughs) 